Welcome back to our Buzzer Heaters, the podcast where college students make their own takes on things. Stop listening to Max Kellerman. How old is he? Too fucking old. These are our takes through our lens. We grew up in the social media era. So you know what? We're going to give you news how we, how we view it. And you know what? Today is June 2nd, 2020. We'd like to start off the podcast shouting out some birthdays. Abby Wambach legend, probably the best women's soccer player I've ever seen in my life, for sure. Won the FIFA World Cup, which was unbelievable. I mean, her header game was nuts. She's control of the ball is crazy. Elite level athlete. And then we're going to have another birthday shout out to Eddie Lacey. And around here at Buzzer Heaters, we like to call him Cheeseburger Eddie. Cheeseburger Eddie. That man... Went from 100, whatever he weighed, 200 pounds, to a mere 350 in about two years. I remember when this guy was hurtling defenders. It was Aaron Rodgers' second-hand man. And probably in a few months, he just threw that all away for some cheeseburgers. He went from hurtling defenders to hurtling milkshakes. Yeah, he He was getting incentivized by teams that he was on to lose weight to make money. It's crazy. That was part of his contract. His quote was, he's got the shakes that'll make you quake. He's got the fries that'll cross your eyes. He's got the burgers that'll, he just got the burgers. He just got the burger. burgers. Eddie, I mean, that man was fat. And he, I can't believe he was a professional running back that blew away his career for McDonald's. At the I end mean, of the day. he was always a big guy too, but there comes nah. a point where you're just like, I hate to say it, too big. Calvin too Benjamin's big. a big guy. Yeah. He never got, he was, Calvin Benjamin's, yeah. he, he was too big. He's got girth to him. He's not Bro, fat. Bro, I remember at the end of his career, the man couldn't move. Could not move. Do you know his most recent tweet? What is the most recent tweet? Despicable Me 1 and 2, and now Shrek is on. Dope day for me. <laughs> See? Uh, yeah, and I, cheeseburgers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I know he's snacking during all those movies. Yeah, he's, he's definitely he's a Shrek, Shrek fan. All right, so we're going to get into the he news. We're going to get into the Shrek. recent news uh, going on. So the MLB actually proposed a 114-game season. And honestly, all other podcasts that you're going to listen to, or if you don't even listen to anything, are going to discuss... How, what that means for the game, how the players are going to react to having less games, fans. We don't care about that. You can listen at other, other places. What we care about is that that means 48 less games of fans drinking beer. Yeah, and unacceptable. That's, I mean, that's a highly coveted job to be one of the vendors selling beer. Like, you're losing 48 games a lot of games. Yeah, think about it. Like, these vendors make a ton of friends yes. just selling beer. Like, they, these are, like, local, like... Community favorites that people love and that it's just enhance the ballpark job. experience. All right, let's be real for a second. This is 162 games of no beer because there's not going to be a single fan in the stadium. There, oh, there That's isn't going to be fans, yeah. but that is a good call. Hypothetically, let's say if there was 114 game season with fans, the beer is the biggest issue. That is the biggest <laughs> issue. It's the eyes. biggest issue yeah. in our eyes. So what we're going to segue to is Budweiser actually happens to be the official beer of the MLB. I don't know who fucking knows that. That seems like a random beer to sponsor the MLB. But I don't think it really fits the brand of the MLB. I don't know what you guys think. When I think MLB, I, I'm thinking Coors Light. I think Budweiser is a NASCAR type of beer. Uh, yeah, I definitely don't think Budweiser is an MLB type of beer. I think something more like Coors Light or even like a Corona just for the vibes. No. Um, would be a better beer. Think about it. What is Corona sponsored like? It's got to get its name out there. I think that MLB, a MLB thing, a... it is a beach thing, and but MLB you kick off your What's sandals. Corona's, it's a, yeah. You're in the summer, and Corona's a very summery MLB's, type yeah. beer. I I I, I went there. Corona. MLB up there too. <laughs> oh, there MLB, it is. MLB, there, there you go. Something there. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I don't really see any of the other beers fitting. Budweiser doesn't really fit to me. It seems very artificial. Does not work. Maybe Miller Lite. Miller I see like Miller Lite being a beer that MLB Miller Lite could definitely yeah. work. I feel like that's like a. Very traditional, like a hardworking type of beer. Oh, so it's it's very blue collar. Very, baseball, yeah, blue I feel collar. like, is a blue collar yeah. sport. You work. I think that's yeah. the answer. Miller Lite. So are we going with Miller Lite. So like Miller Lite. MLB, Agreed. you hear this? You're not doing it right with Budweiser. You're probably making a shitload of money off of them. But we're thinking Miller Lite might be the uh, way to go. To be honest. Switching gears. There was beef. There's recent beef uh, with two elite level wide receivers in the NFL. We're talking DeAndre Hopkins. We're talking Michael Thomas. Who's the best wide receiver in the league? Why do you think so? First off, beef 
for wide receiver between wide receiver is fucking ignorant. You literally cannot prove anything because there's no way to defend each other. Like you can't. It's not like a cornerback is talking trash to a receiver you can where you still can settle prove at. It I disagree. Sad. Who I plays better? I don't think you can compare receivers because what the quarterback throwing the ball, yeah. the offense they're in. If someone's in a perfect system, they could put up numbers to be the best receiver in the league, but by far be not the most talented. 100%. I think if DeAndre Hopkins has an incredible year this year, I think that's actually going to help him because that shows that he is an elite receiver. Uh, going into different systems, going into different quarterbacks, if he can still perform at the highest level, I think uh, this actually could be a good thing considering he didn't have the greatest um, relationships in Houston. I will say DeAndre Hopkins has had some pretty fucking shitty quarterbacks throwing him the ball over the years. And he has just put up numbers year after year after year where Michael Thomas, I mean, I've never seen a route runner like that. He is open 24-7. You literally can't guard Mike. But the Drew way Hop uses his body is also, I think, something that goes a little bit unnoticed. Like, the way he uses his body when he's on the sideline or even going up for jump balls, I think is one of the best in the NFL. One of the... One of the knockoffs of Michael Thomas that many people out there believe is like he catches a bunch of five yard passes. If every receiver could get open for five yards, they would take five yards every play. It's a craft and he's developed it. But DeAndre Hopkins is the best talent I think I've seen in the league today. I mean if you're okay if you're in in the red zone, it's the fourth quarter and you need a touchdown, you're going to D hop over Michael Thomas. I got I don't think there's debate at all. I got news for you though. Neither of them are the best receiver in the league. So who do you have? It's it's gotta be Julio. Julio is a fucking freak well, Julio athlete. He's a NBC specimen, and he's performing. He's the biggest freak receiver in NFL history. He's gotta be the best. But I will say, back to the argument, Drew Brees, MVP quarterback. Matt Ryan was an MVP quarterback, so clearly has the skill set. DeAndre Hopkins has had some fucking bums throwing in the ball. I'm just going to name a few. Matt Schaub. I mean, Matt Schaub, legend, throwing the ball to Andre Johnson. Those years were electric. electric. But still, TJ Yates. Who the fuck are you, bro? Like, TJ Yates. I don't really know who you are, even. Matt Weiner. At the end of his career, Case Keenum wasn't great with them. Ryan Mallett was a very bust player. So. Brian Hoyer. Brock Osweiler. Tom fucking Savage. Like, he had so many different non like, not good quarterbacks that's, throwing him the ball. And he performed yeah. every single year. That's bum nation right there. Can't hold it against Mike, Mike Thomas, though. Not his fault. He's only a one quarterback throwing to him. Of course. Cannot hold it against. But back to the thing, it's hard to argue wide receivers. I don't – I think beef between wide receivers is fucking stupid. It's such a systematic – you quarterback. A cornerback going after a receiver, different. Prove yourself on the fucking field. Receivers, you're not going up against each other. There's no way to really tell. Yeah, they can't just go, like, one-on-one, like a basketball player saying he's better than another guy. So, yeah, I don't think they can go – they can go at each other for fun, but, like, there's no real answer that but they can, like, test. How can you compare any sports figures then? Well, I, you, can, how you can, can for sure compare it with Beverly and Westbrook beef, and they meet in that Western Conference Finals – Houston, Pat Bev, OKC, Russell Westbrook. I mean, those are some battles. Westbrook, they Conference can Finals. battle each other Whoa. on on the God, court, where cool, where the other where these NFL receivers cannot battle each other on the field. They just can't do it. The Dame and Westbrook beef that was awesome. awesome. Dame and Westbrook, awesome. But but you're saying you so you can't compare a point guard and a center. You can because they can battle out on the court. But when they you can get two receivers, the court. they're never going to be like on the field at the same time, exactly. showing their dominance over the other. That's guys. why I think beef football. Uh, uh, if it's offense player, offense player, dude, be friends. There's no reason to fucking hate the other guy. You, there's no way to prove it. I mean, you can yeah. put up stats and trophies, but at the end of the day, you're not going one on one at all. After yeah, that. I agree. If you're a receiver, you're really only as good as your quarterback or your team. I couldn't disagree more with this whole take. All right. Wow. You know what? Speaking of football. And uh, receivers, actually. And the news, we had Henry Ruggs injured his thigh. And it was a very interesting type of injury. He uh, injured his thigh while moving furniture. I don't know. I think he pulled his thigh or whatever he did moving a couch. I think there was a laceration in his quad. And I think there was a report that said if it was like a few millimeters further, it could have potentially ended his career. But moving a couch, that seems very odd for such an elite level yeah, athlete to bizarre. fucking hurt himself moving a couch. It doesn't really make sense. So you know what? Yeah, it's bizarre. 
that that got us thinking here at Buzzer Heaters, and we're gonna uh, dive deep into other like whack injuries that like we have experienced in our lifetime. And the first thing, honestly, that comes to mind for me is Enos Cantor. Do you guys remember when he ate seven cheeseburgers and then mixed, missed the next game due to illness? I don't. I don't. When, when was that? Oh my God! He ate seven cheeseburgers and missed practice the next day. Called in, was ill, and then did not show up to the next game because he had food poisoning from the seven burgers he ate. What a bum! What's he doing? He's <laughs> a yeah, professional. Where Eddie he, Lacy is he Eddie Lacy? Burgers? Exactly. Where, where I, was he yeah. eating the burgers that he just kept going? Like, yes, yeah, seven burgers. So good. Okay, I follow him on Twitter, and every I don't know what day it is, but every week he posts his cheat day, and there was a shit ton of food. There's like two pizzas, there's burgers, there's fries, there's a whole. Why bunch does of he shit. need that? I don't know why week. he does this. Um, Even yeah, though he this is, is a joke. Enos is in great shape, an underrated jacked athlete. He is in shape. I think, That's a cool I think story. though, the number one idiot move injury has to be Jason Pierre-Paul losing his finger from fireworks. I mean... That's, that's a good call. That's You can celebrate 4th of July, don't do it that way. That was fucking dumb. It yeah, didn't really make sense. That's mind-boggling. You right? know what? I'll argue, though, that there was dumber. I'll argue Plexico Burris. What the hell yeah. is he doing? What the, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Why does he have a gun on him? Can someone explain that? Why I feel like it? that part of the story never got answered. Like, I understand he's out. an idiot for shooting himself in the first place. <laughs> but why didn't he have a gun in his pocket? Does anyone know? <laughs> where, uh, did he, where did he live in? I can't, like, find a way to, like, understand what was going on in his mind. And that whole situation makes zero sense to me. Uh, his head was clearly up his ass or somewhere, not in up this year. girl's universe. ass. Yeah, yeah, maybe somewhere. But, yeah, that's... I mean, the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. That was a pretty fucking stupid self-inflicted wound, but another self-inflicted, to an extent, was when Blake Griffin got in a fucking argument with his the team employee and punched him, broke his hand, had surgery on his hand, was out for, I mean, he was suspended, and then he was injured, and that was when Lob City was coming to the end. That it. was the end of Blake Griffin that itself. Like, Blake Griffin was so funny, he was on all the commercials, he was such a celebrity, and I feel like after that, it's he's just never reached that level. Once Blake Griffin started shooting jump shots, he was ruined. That's that's my take. Didn't he date, wasn't he dating Kendall Jenner, too? He might have. There's a Kardashian I, he curse. Was da- he, oh, there is a Kardashian curse with that, 100%. Yeah, uh, I think he could have been yeah, a dominant of. force in the NBA for close to a decade more after even Lob City, and... I hate to see it, but yeah, I don't really respect Blake Griffin anymore. Sick high school hooper, though. Oh, wow. I mean, his dunk contests oh, were well, unbelievable. Was when he jumped over that Kia, <laughs> that was incredible. Incredible. Yeah. That, that might have been his peak. That was the Sprite Slam cam. And you know what? Speaking of punches and injuries, it was, I think it was about a year ago, maybe two years ago, when Bobby Portis just clocked the fucking shit out of Miritich in that practice. Like, literally knocked him out cold almost. And Miritich was like, a bitch. was like, I don't want to play with you anymore. Like, <laughs> you hurt me in practice. Like, we literally watched the last dance. Jordan did not give a shit. He would, I, he didn't necessarily punch his teammates, but he would have. Oh, clock Steve Kerr. Yeah. 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 He punched Steve Kerr. Like, he would have, he would do anything to win. And everyone was like, oh, I respect it. You want to fucking win. Bobby Portis throws one punch after a heated scrimmage. Obviously, times have changed, but. Grow a sack of balls. Don't Mary fucking... Mary was out for a couple weeks. He, he, he was out. Yeah, no, he was out for a while. He had a fractured him. face and a concussion. Don't fuck with Bobby. Face. I think that's the lesson learned here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Bobby Portis in college, those eyes were popping. The goggles with the goggles. Oh, my God. He was phenomenal. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I would not want to be... Uh, in front of one of those haymakers, Bobby's definitely got some force behind him. Apparently, Miritich charged at Portis twice before Portis threw a punch. So it was Miritich's fault to start with. Yeah. That's oh my god! And we then he there. requests, to to and then he requests to trade. That's horrible. I mean, That's maybe, horrible. Maybe Portis said something, but he clearly said something. Yeah, there, it wasn't in silence. They're playing hoops. There's a little trash I mean, talk. I, I mean, like make moment. your teammates better to an extent. I like it. And you know what? Obviously, June 2nd, we're longing for sports. It's been hard without uh, some live sports. UFC has really came in clutch for all of us with the live sports. It's been very tough. But there still is news to be said, as you've heard today. And we love covering the news, giving our takes on everything. And we hope you guys are more informed and honestly have our takes on shit because it's fucking fun as fuck. 
And that's Buzzer Heaters for you. Follow us on Twitter at Buzzer Heaters. Follow us on Instagram at Buzzer Heaters. And before we're going to sign off, we're going to shout out our sponsors, which sadly we don't have any yet. But Manscaped, if you're listening, we really want you guys. Dude Wipes, Jägermeister. Beats Headphones. Beats Headphones, Roman Swipes. Snapple. Snapple. Oh, my God. Phenomenal drink. And you know what? We want McDonald's, but we don't want McDonald's because you hurt Enos Canner once and you hurt Eddie Lacy's whole entire career. Yep. Thank you so much. This has been Buzzer Heaters. Sayonara. Peace out.